Decision making is one of the most important aspects of Rocket League, but it's also one of the most difficult to improve that. And that is mainly due to just how fast Rocket League is. In most cases, we know what decisions we shouldn't make, but in the moment, it's incredibly hard to resist that temptation, and then we normally end up feeling quite bad about ourselves, as immediately after we make a poor decision, we realize that we shouldn't have made it. So in today's video, we'll be discussing a way that you can work on your decision making, so that you can avoid making the decisions that make you feel bad about yourself. Now, when we talk about decision making, one of the biggest aspects of this part of the game is recognizing the different situations we can find ourselves in quickly and knowing how to react to those situations accordingly. We'll be hopping into one of our replays here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking around at the different decisions we're making, we're gonna be pausing the replay and kind of digesting all of the things going on around the field, and then based on that information, we'll determine what decision we should make, and we'll see if the decisions we're making in-game are the correct ones based on when we have all of the information available to us. So let's go ahead and kick this right on off. We're gonna go ahead and talk through things as we go along. So decent kickoff right here, going over and getting the mid-boost. This is totally fine as the ball goes into their corner. And then I like this, right? So what we see here is our opponent just air dribbling through the air. Our teammate is not back yet, so there's absolutely no way that we can just jump up for this from where we are. He would just easily hit it over the top of us and directly into the net. So staying on the ground here and making sure that we keep a solid line between the ball and our goal is exactly what we want to be doing in this situation. So like that, I see that here. Just nice and patient, wait for him to come down, and we get the touch calmly and smoothly. Maybe a little bit of a rush back here on defense as the ball is just kind of chilling in our opponent's corner. We really do flip back pretty quickly and it's gonna cause us to get back to net and then have to hit the brakes here before we can go ahead and get this challenge, but it's not too bad. Get this touch around. Now right here, we recognize that there is a good gap between ourselves and the opponent. We have one opponent behind us who is going to be recovering, but what we want to do is we don't want to leave a gap between ourselves and the ball because that is what will allow an opponent to come in for an unexpected challenge. So with our 39 boost, it would be great if we could jump off this wall and just stay in contact with the ball so that any potential challenge does result in a 50-50 rather than just a clear win for the opponent because of us just letting the ball sit in front of us. So as we see there, we do get beat out simply because we are not in contact with the ball. Patience here, teammate with control. Move on upfield. Good job preserving the boost here. And now right here, this is very tempting. Very tempting. This ball is right on the goal line. This guy looks awkward. Looks like an opportunity to go ahead and jump for this shot. But we have to recognize our teammate going to be slow to recover back. This is the exact baiting opportunity that occurs so many times through so many games that players will jump for and it will result in you immediately being counterattacked because despite how good this opportunity looks there really is not a whole lot of actual opportunity to put the ball in the net here as the opponent does have the advantage of just needing to hit the ball above the crossbar whereas you need to get it into the net so advantage to the defense in that situation and we can see the immediate clear coming through luckily our teammate does get back in time and it is not a problem and we do rotate quite well to keep our momentum up and be able to get back into the play here and now this is just disgraceful this is just pitiful work on our part we do have an opportunity here if we just go there is every chance that we get a touch here the ball goes back into the mid and our teammate is still in a spot to put a shot on however the longer we just sit on the ground like this and watch this thing float through the air the more likely our opponent is going to get in a position to challenge us and that is exactly what happens so this hesitation is something that absolutely will not fly if we want to capitalize on opportunities like this so perfect world here is we just go for this ball right away force it back around the corner put that defender in a very awkward spot and give our teammate an opportunity but instead we're going to take way too much time and then not only are we going to take too much time and allow our opponent to dive in for that ball but we're even going to dive in ourselves and leave our teammate alone in a 2v1 situation now right here again another very tempting look to just dive in for this but we have to recognize that this player is going to want to clear the ball back 
towards us. So they're going to plan to play the ball towards us. So if we just wait on this area of the wall, there is a pretty good chance that we're either just going to force them to make this play and chip the ball over the top of us, or we're going to put them in an awkward enough spot where they end up just hitting the ball into us, and then we get free play off of that. So patience here is a very good idea and you can see it's going to pay off as we get the free touch and we have a great opportunity for a shot here if we had just a little bit more boost unfortunately with only 23 gonna be a little hard to get over this last defender but we are gonna go for it anyway because it's not gonna take us too far out of the play and with our opponent being as awkward as they are it really isn't that big of a deal as we can recover very quickly and immediately get back to support our teammate as we can see here Good save by our teammate. Now we got space in the midfield. Now right here, we need to be careful. What we need to do is we need to know how far away the opponent behind us is. Based on what we saw, they're probably not super close. And if we look, there is a good bit of space that we did have. So there's absolutely no reason to panic here. Unless, of course, you were not aware of how much space you had available. In which case, we might end up with a touch that just throws the ball away from us when we have a beautiful opportunity to go for control in a 1v1 directly on net. So this is where awareness is really important and understanding how much time you have dictates what you're able to do with the ball. In this case, unfortunately, we're going to just absolutely panic and slap the ball away from ourselves, giving it up to our opponents. Good patience, chip the ball up. Now right here, I think we could have done a bit more. So this is real tempting to just hit the ball directly into the air, but I think we could have given ourselves a bit more control and more importantly put the ball in a safer location. We're expecting a lot from ourselves mechanically, especially with this demo potentially coming in, to try to just chip this ball up into the air and jump up to follow it. Ideally, if we could just hit this over to the side and follow it on over that way, we could go for control up the wall. That does a couple of things. Number one, it's a much easier play to execute mechanically, which means it's far less likely to end in us making a horrible mistake. It also buys a lot of time for our teammate to get back without a whole lot of risk in terms of what's going to happen. Instead, we do get a bit lucky that we get this ball up into the air and we get ourselves into the air before that bump comes in. But now because of how awkward this play is, the other defender is already in the air and it's just gonna be pretty impossible for us to get this ball over him which would have been avoided if we had just played it into a more favorable position for us. And now right here, this is like one of the cardinal sins of Rocket League is just being the last man back, like teammates over here, we're last man back, and our only focus right now, apparently, is how to get the ball around this guy. Which, you know, is a great idea until you realize that if you hit this ball off the sidewall, that is just a pass for the other opponent to come in for an absolutely free shot. So if we're going to go for this ball, we need to make sure that we get a light enough touch that it just kind of falls back around this area and does not shoot off the sidewall to become a pass for the opponent if we want to focus on getting the ball around this player. Unfortunately, we are going to go ahead and just chip this ball directly off the sidewall. And looky there, there's our other opponent there for the pass. And that's a great passing play from us if we were indeed playing for the other team. Good use of no ball cam here to take a look. And now right here, we're going to go ahead and double jump. And I think that's a mistake. We have an opportunity here at the net. This guy is absolutely not in a position to make a save. If we just read how this bounce is going and take another half second to keep our wheels on the ground and stay calm, we could single jump here, flip into this ball, and probably have ourselves a free goal. But instead, we make the mistake that we're trying to get to the ball quickly. For some reason, we feel like we need to beat someone to this ball, and it just ends up in the lightest slap that you've ever gosh darn well seen, and it's a free ball for the opponents. We do turn back on it, and again, here, we're not really in a position to score this ball, so just playing for a solid 50-50 here is really all we can ask, which is exactly what we do, so well done there. Good bum to buy some space for our teammate. Not going to work out perfectly, but it does do something. Play this ball downfield again. We're kind of just slapping this ball away a little bit too hard probably. We probably have an opportunity to take a slightly lighter touch and be able to control the ball. I think the thought is that we see a possible pass, but if we look at how our teammate's positioned, he is facing back this way, which should say to us, hey, 
That's not really an option. Just get around this guy and then focus on the 1v1. But we can't focus on the 1v1 if we just boom this ball away. So it's all about recognizing what we see here, realizing that that's not the passing option that we really think it is, and then making sure that we utilize that information appropriately to make the best play on the ball that we can. And this, this is the kind of aggression we wanted to see from the first challenge along this sidewall that we missed on. But this is a bit dangerous. We get a bit lucky that this player is just flying over this direction. These balls are very risky because all you're doing here is really just slapping this ball into the midfield. And if our teammate is not here and he's like rotating over this way, if this guy's in a better position, this could just be a direct counterattack once again. So it might be a better idea to, again, try to take a light touch here, look for a bit of control, and maybe try to just play a bit safer, rather than just trying to go super fast, because again, that could have ended very poorly. Not much we really need to do in this instance, just kind of chilling and waiting. I actually really like this idea overall. This is a great use of the opponent inevitably staring at our teammate here. So when we see the opportunity that our teammate really doesn't have anything going here, even if he does flip into this it's kind of just going to fall to this guy so we do have an opportunity to go for this shot just unfortunately not the best execution that we could have gotten so now under a minute to go again probably getting a little too close to the play this is just absolutely awkward so right here we need to recognize look at look at the opponents like there's not anything we need to worry about here we have time we don't need to like awkwardly back up we can just turn and take control of the ball maybe catch it back to our corner and play it up the wall it's not the end of the world we try to do too much here we think we're gonna have a challenge and that really comes down to the fact that we're just not looking where we need to look to gain the information we need to gain we're just not playing with enough awareness and it's causing us to be in awkward situations like this for absolutely no reason this is smart just recognizing hey nothing we can really go for here this is fine force out the flip sure just staying between the offender and the goal. Perfectly fine. Get the demo by space for teammate. Totally chilling. Could have gone for demo here, but there was going to be two defenders back anyway. Lovely flick from our teammate. And then this is a really smart play that I like. So we're in a situation where we need to keep this ball in the air. We have a squishy save coming. Now the thing about a squishy save is there's really not much you can do to prevent the timing from occurring once you're like in this area of the net. So the best way to beat a squishy save is to let them go for it and hold your shot until after they're kind of like halfway to three quarters of the way through it and that will give you the opportunity to hit the ball directly over the top of the challenging player as you can see here we delay our shot ever so slightly and are just able to put it right over the top that's a zero second goal and that sends us to overtime we're gonna fast forward here to the very end of overtime to just see another prime example of just what not to do so right here, again, we immediately need to recognize the situation we're in. Teammate on the opponent's backboard. We are last back. It is our main responsibility right now to defend the net. Like, yeah, great to score. But the only way we can lose is if we give up our own net. If we focus on defending our own net, then there is absolutely no way that we can lose in the current situation that we find ourselves in. Unfortunately, we wouldn't really be talking about this if we were smart enough to make the right decision. So again, we're gonna find ourselves with what is an extremely tempting ball. But again, you have to realize, you have to wait for this ball to fall down. They just need to get this ball out of here. And in these situations, it's also incredibly important to consider the position your teammate's in. Clearly in this position, he is not going to get back anytime soon. So despite how tempting this looks, there once again is really not a whole lot of opportunity for us to go for here. Would be much safer to just stay on the ground, let this guy jump, and then play off of this because they are also probably pretty low on boost at the moment. So we have the advantage in this play if we don't do this. But the second we're up in the air like this in a situation where even if we get a 50, it's still not really going to fall that favorably for us. And over the top of us it goes, and it's just a free counter-attack. 
with an open net the other way. As you can see, a lot of decisions there really revolve around understanding the positions of the other players on the field and understanding how those positions impact the decisions you make. If you're simply not aware enough of where all the other players are, there will be many costly mistakes simply because you make an uninformed decision. So that should give you guys a pretty good idea of how you can go about improving your decision making. It's going to be quite a slow process as you just have to train your brain to recognize the different situations so you can make sure that you make the right decision when the moment presents itself. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you that made it to this point in the video and I do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be a bit more involved in the community we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.